This programming is sponsored by the Dan L. Duncan Comprehensive Cancer Care Center at Baylor St. Luke's Medical Center. Offering comprehensive cancer care that is compassionate, personalized, and driven by clinical research. More at stlukeshealth.org slash cancer. This is the Engines of Our Ingenuity, made possible by the friends of KUHF Houston. Today, guest scientist Andrew Boyd votes. The University of Houston presents this series about the machines that make our civilization run and the people whose ingenuity created them. The 2000 presidential election between George W. Bush and Al Gore brought to our attention the problems involved with counting votes. Dangling chads notwithstanding, political scientists have long been aware that there are much deeper problems with voting systems, problems so fundamental they leave us scratching our heads and asking what's going on. Trouble first surfaced during the Enlightenment as Jean-Charles de Bourdin and the Marquis de Condorcet debated the merits of different voting schemes. But it was not until 1951 that Nobel laureate Kenneth Arrow fully laid bare a problem that Bourdin and Condorcet had been struggling with. Bourdin advocated letting people rank each candidate with a number, adding the points, and choosing the candidate with the best total score. We could view the method of voting we use today as a special case of Bourdin's method, where our favorite candidate receives one point and everyone else receives none. Condorcet, on the other hand, advocated a vote between every pair of candidates. The candidate that wins in every comparison is elected. The practical problem with Condorcet's method is that it may fail to produce a winner. We see this all the time in athletic competitions. The Astros beat the Reds, the Reds beat the Cubs, and the Cubs beat the Astros. Who's the winner? In voting, this is known as Condorcet's paradox. But there's a hidden problem in Bourdas' method of numerical ranking, too. Imagine Smith and Jones are running for office. We cast our votes, and Smith wins. Now suppose a new candidate enters the election, and we vote again. Even if we all feel the same way about Smith and Jones, we may find Jones now wins. This is a very real problem in U.S. elections, and the Democratic and Republican parties constantly worry about candidates from third parties claiming votes. The fact that candidates entering the race can change the order of the remaining candidates is very alarming. If I prefer chocolate ice cream to vanilla, and someone offers me strawberry ice cream, why should I now prefer vanilla to chocolate? Yet this is exactly what can happen with Bourdas method. We might ask if there is a voting system, any system at all, that doesn't threaten to flip-flop the two candidates when a third candidate enters the race. Remarkably, Arrow proved that for any voting system meeting the most basic standards of common sense, the answer is no. The implications for voting are stunning, but the impact of Arrow's work on economics and social choice goes far deeper. If we can't combine individual preferences in any reasonable way, can we even talk about society's preferences? If we can't talk about society's preferences, how can we develop economic or social policies and claim they represent what society prefers? Arrow did more than prove a result that now bears his name. Like many of the best results in science, engineering, and mathematics, Arrow's theorem distills a known problem into its most basic pieces, and in doing so helps us see the world in a surprising new way. I'm Andy Boyd at the University of Houston, where we're interested in the way inventive minds work. (laughs) ¶¶